team that's black that plays for you. You just do I know? I support them and give them food and clothes and cars and houses. Who gives it to them? Does someone else give it to them? Do I know that I have? Who makes the game? Do I make the game or do they make the game? And there's not 30 owners that create the league. I'm not going to bring any black people to the stadium. This week, I know a lot of you really, you watch, you watch basketball and you love basketball. I'm going to tell you, basketball is a coon sport. It is a coon sport used to entertain white folks. Today's class is going to be entitled the NBA. The NBA, which stands for the National Basketball Association, or, as I like to say, the nigger basketball assimilation. So we'll, we'll, we'll word it nice. Let's call it Negro basketball assimilationists. We'll call it that. Uh, Abiel, can you look up, uh, look up race and ethnicity? on Wikipedia for me, in the NBA. Race and ethnicity in the NBA. I don't know if that thing has been updated as yet, but <clears throat> let me go down. It says, the composition of race and ethnicity in the National Basketball Association, NBA, has changed throughout the league's history. The first non-white player entered the league in 1947. According to racial equality activist Richard Lapchick, the NBA in 2011 was composed of 78% black players, 17% whites, 4% Latinos, and 1% Asian. All right, well, the point is this. Right now, it's about, eight, I would guess, about 80-something percent, 85% black. That's all right, that's all right. And this week, I know a lot of you really, you watch, you watch basketball and you love basketball. I'm going to tell you, basketball is a cool sport. It is a cool sport used to entertain white folks. Um, Abiel, give me the video on Don Sterling. I'm not going to watch. We're not going to watch the whole video. Yes, we're going to look at this one right here. There are white Jews and black Jews. More audio allegedly featuring cultural views of L.A. Clippers' owner. You, you think I'm a racist? And I don't think you're a racist. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think you... you Evil heart. I don't think so. I think you have an amazing heart, honey. I think the people around you have poisoned mind and have a way of thinking. It's the world. You go to Israel, the blacks are just treated like dogs. So do you have the, to treat them like that too? The white Jews, there's white Jews or black Jews. Do you understand? And are the black Jews less than the white Jews? 100%, 50, 150. And is that right? It is a question. We don't evaluate what's right and wrong. We live in a society. We live in a culture. We have to live within that culture. But shouldn't we take a stand for what's wrong and be the change and the difference? I, I don't want to change the culture because I can't. It's too big. But you can powerful. change yourself. I don't want to change it. My girl can't do what I want. I don't want the girl. I'll find a girl that will do what I want. Believe me. I thought you were that girl because I try to do what you want. But you're not that girl. There's no need to get upset. No need to get... I just see what, what I'm living with, what I'm do, dealing with. I'm sorry, I didn't do anything. You, know, you never do anything and never anything wrong. But I didn't do you anything. Upset you, I upset me. You I upset me. You made yourself upset. No, that's not true. You, you didn't start off by saying, honey, I understand we're living in a culture. We can't Because I don't, under, I don't see your views. I, I wasn't raised the way you were raised. Well, then if, if you don't feel, don't come to my games. Don't bring black people and don't come. 
Do you know that you have a whole team that's black that plays for you? You just, do I know? I support them and give them food and clothes and cars and houses. Who gives it to them? Does someone else give it to them? Do I know that I have? Who makes the game? Do I make the game or do they make the game? There's no 30 owners that created the league. Bring, I'm not going to bring any black people to the stadium. Well, is it easy to say that? It's very easy for you to say that. For you to say that. I, I won't say that to anyone. I would never ask anyone not to bring someone based on race or okay. color okay. or culture. Okay. It's like saying, like, let's just persecute and kill all of the Jews. Oh, it's the same thing, right? Well, isn't it wrong? Wasn't it wrong then? With the Holocaust? And you're Jewish. You understand you're, you're discrimination? You're really a mental case. The Holocaust we're comparing with... Racism. Uh, uh, discrimination. No racism here? If you don't want to be walking into a basketball game with a certain person, is that racism? Well, there you have it. So... The part I wanted y'all to hear, he said that the black Jews are treated like dogs. He's referring, now everybody is, uh, first assumes he's talking about the Falashas. But there's others there. Go to, um, type in ben -Ami. Now, they started off in, they went there in 1967. They went, started with just 300. Right now they got about 3,000. And those are black, uh, uh, American blacks uh, and West Indian blacks that went over there in the 60s, they put them in a desert wasteland. They had no medical, no uh, dental, and uh, the agreement they made with the Israeli government was that they had to fight in their military against the Palestinians. So when Don Sterling said they treat the black Jews like dogs, they're included in that too, okay? They are included in that to our people. Um, what else did he say in that little interview that y'all picked, not interview, in that statement? What else did he say that stuck out to you? Ezra. Uh, the part where he was saying about um, he's the one who gives them clothes, houses, cars. He said, I give the basketball team, he says, I give them food. I give them clothes, cars, and houses. That's Deuteronomy. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 2848. Let's read that. Let's, let's read that. Was, that's the scripture right there in a nutshell. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. So the Bible says we will serve our enemies. In what, Isaac, again? In hunger. In hunger, that's that food. Go ahead. And in thirst. Go ahead. And in nakedness. That's some clothes that Donald Sterling was talking about. Go ahead. And in want of all things. That's the cars and the houses that he was talking about. He says, I give it to him. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So Donald Sterling is the people that put the yokes of iron upon the necks of our people. Go ahead. Until he have destroyed them. Until our people were mentally and spiritually destroyed. Do y'all notice something about, how many of y'all got a job? And it's, you have an employer, you are the employee. You work for whoever. But in basketball, it's different. What, are they, what is the wording? Anybody notice the words? Zeph, what's the words? The words are different. They're called owners. They're called owners. Owners. And I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, I started getting, because I really don't watch basketball. I think it's stupid as hell. I used to play it, but once I learned the scripture, I just stopped looking at it. Grown-ass men running up in shorts, throwing a ball in a hoop. I'm like, I don't get it. It's childish, you know? White man leaves the game, and he forgets the game, and he's contemplating taking down nations. Blacks and Latinos leave the game, and they're playing more in the damn courts and video games. I'm like, this is stupid as hell. That's no different from what Malcolm said about the slave on the field. We sick. Mm -hmm. if the house burned down. Our house burned down. Exactly. That's how blacks and Latinos are. We, well, not no we, the owner. The owner won. There was a, there was a movie called, now, Paul Mooney is a funny, I don't know how many of y'all know Paul Mooney. There was a joke where he said, people were saying they made that movie, White Men Can't Jump. Paul Mooney said they don't have to. 
they own the team. <laughs> he goes, look, my niggas are jumping. Jump, nigga, jump, jump, nigga. And that's exactly what goes on. They own, they, the words just. Wait a minute, Elder, but that's the reason why he said, I give them food. Clothes. That's like a dog. I, get, I feed my dogs. I put shelter on my dogs. I put shelter around my dogs. I give them clothes. I protect them. I give them dog houses. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. I know we don't want to face that, but that's what he's saying. I give them food. I give them food, clothes, all, clothes, cars, that's and what he houses. Said. He said that niggas should be satisfied. That's what he's saying. Yep. And he, he owned her too. He told her he said, "Listen, right, that's he, right." He said, "You can bring them. Don't bring them to the game. You can f them. I don't care what you do. Just don't bring them to the games." I was for that one. He told her that also. Right. He owned her too, and she's like, "Yes, honey. Yes, yes, sir." She should have said, "Boss." Now I, I'm gonna tell you something. Oh, Isaac, let's because I'm going to go. Remind me to talk about uh, his friends. Go ahead, Captain. Psalms 44, verse 14. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. A byword means, like, nigger. That's a byword. Negro is another byword. Slave, that's a byword. Gentile, that's a byword. Go ahead. A shaking of the head among the people. You know what it means? Somebody look at you go, mm, mm, mm. Here it comes. Here come Magic Johnson. He takes, she, the girlfriend takes a picture with him. A picture. Puts it on Instagram. The dude says, when y'all listen to the whole thing, he says, my friends are calling me about this. Well, what, why are you taking pictures with them? With them. And, and, and see what y'all didn't pick up? Though. What did, he said, my friends are calling me. Notice he said also in this one, he said there's about 30 team owners. My point is, you hang out with people of your, of your class. He is a team owner. He hangs out with other team owners. Those are his friends. He says, why do my friends call me and tell me about this stuff? The mindset that he has, guess what? I know you don't want to hear it. It's the same mindset of the other team owners. Right. Can we read that again, Isaac? <coughs> yes, sir. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. Here come, here comes the blacks and Latinos. Watch this. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face hath covered me. I don't understand what's going on. I thought this was 2014. You simple as hell. People are simple. I got to say this, Elder. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of Negroes. Y'all with me? A lot of Negroes were happy when, who was that guy that was over the whole NBA thing that, that, that ousted him? That slim white dude. What's his name? Cause I don't keep up like the elder. I don't keep up with none of that garbage. But I saw him stand up, and I guess he's like over the whole thing. He's the commissioner. He's the commissioner, and he says that he banned him forever. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Took him out. Negroes was happy. Negroes were happy when he did that. I know they were happy. Negroes See, are stupid. Uh, but, but, but let me tell you what the white man did. He did that because he quarantined the situation. Y'all, they didn't get that, Elder. They didn't get that. He quarantined the situation because by silencing him, he put a lid on him so that the rest of his friends won't even come up. Well, that's him right there. That's the cat. Did y'all get what I said? Everybody Let me it. show you something, though. They didn't get it. But they didn't get it. what do y'all notice is wrong with that? They, 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 they quote, unquote, silenced him. They said, we got to take a stand. We have to do something. What's wrong with that? Anybody think? Think about Don Sterling historically. This is not the first time. He refused to rent to black and Hispanics. There yeah, you go. 2003 to 2000, the Department of Justice was going to the NBA going against Don Sterling because he refused to rent to blacks and Latinos because he's in real estate. He, when they rented a house, his wife would dress up, go to the house, and, and make believe she's a real estate agent to see the race of the people that's there. So this is not the first time. Go back to the Edomite, the tall, skinny guy. Go back. So you might have said, yeah, he did the right thing. No, niggas. <laughs> this ain't the first. He, they knew about Don Sterling from way back when, from way back, and they kept it hush. The entire NBA knew they kept it hush. All of them knew about this dude, and they know about his friends. They kept all this swept under the rug. Y'all be sleeping, you basketball players out there. Why would they keep that hush? 
Why would they keep? I want to see if y'all think it. I, y'all should know better than me because I don't. I can't even touch a bat. Put a basketball in front of me, and I'll I'll hit it with a bat. <laughs> huh? Right, but the real estate magnate had just paid two point seventy three million to settle U.S. government claims that he refused to rent his apartments to Latinos and blacks in Koreatown. Now, notice it says in Koreatown. There's something in real estate or communities they got called ethnic barriers. Ethnic barriers where you are not allowed to go. You keep thinking that we could go, well, I move where I want to move. Nah, niggas. Right. Right. They, they, they call it red line. The white man also. is in cahoots with the Chinese man. Don't let them blacks or Latinos move in here. Y'all got to wake up. You, you basketball, throw a ball in the hoop. Yeah, we won. I just laugh. Good. Let's look at the protest. What did the L.A. Clippers do? I want to go back to the ethnic barriers later on, Abigail, because I like that. Just keep that on the side. The almighty black L.A. Clippers. Is it Clippers? What I say, Lakers before? Clippers. Clippers, whatever the hell they are. Second one. It should be the second one. I hope it's short because I don't want to be watching no stupidity for five minutes. I want to see the protest itself and everybody clap. That ain't it. <laughs> okay. Negroes. And yeah, that dude is black. Ain't he black? The Jake right there on the left. He's Levi? Yeah, yeah, okay. Why is the white man? I ain't even going to comment on this. What the hell am I looking at, man? Abiel, come on. <laughs> and the Esau don't do these things by accident. It's all subliminal. Now here comes your panel of coons. That's what I call them. Magic is here because your name was the name mentioned in the recordings of racist remarks believed to be made by Clippers owner Donald Sterling. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, when you heard those comments, Magic, what was your reaction? Well, Sage, I was really upset. You know, um, you can't understand how hurt I was. And also, I was hurt for all African Americans and all minorities because when a man who owns a team in the NBA. And Donald Sterling has had issues in the past. So this is not the first time. And I've known Donald, uh, one of the first men I met when I came to LA, Dr. Buss took me to his annual Malibu beach party. Actually my first week in LA. Then I met with Donald two or three times. He wanted to discuss the issues with his Clipper team. So I, I had a friendship with him. So for him to then make these comments or alleged comments. Do y'all hear anything wrong with what he said? He knew about Donald Sterling's theatrics for a while and calls him his friend. Meanwhile, Magic Johnson, wealthy, not wealthy, rich, I would say rich Magic Johnson knows that, uh, let's say he Donald, no, Donald Sterling will not let blacks or Latinos move where they want to move. He knows this, but he's his friend. That's a coon mentality for you right there. Two one. And just a few moments ago, upon entering the court for pregame warm-ups, the unified statement from the Clipper players wearing their warm-up shirts inside out so the word Clippers are not across their chest. A statement apparently made regarding the racist comments allegedly made by owner Donald Sterling on a tape that was released by TMZ on Friday, and it's all anyone discussing it. Some of y'all was happy with that. That's weak. That's weak. That's, that's not a protest. That's, that was no test, right? That was some weak, weak Negro stuff there. And y'all clap. Yo, you look what they did. A, pro a protest would have been, we ain't playing basketball. That's would have been a protest. So to, to the question that I forgot, that's the answer. To the, I was going to say earlier. <laughs> Dress it up. That's what, because the whole point is, why would they try to quarantine and beef and, you know, and keep things under wraps because billions and billions of dollars are involved with Negroes playing. That's the point. So if they wanted to make a point, they should have said, you know what, we're tired of this. Mm -hmm. Let all of us just leave. 
man, America would crack in half. Hey, they, they, but the argument is this. The argument will come up is this, y'all. So they're going to say, wait, wait a second. They're going to say, well, if they don't play, they're going to get what? They'll be fine. Now, somebody may say, well, <clears throat> they live above their means. If they don't play, they're going to lose this and that. Well, there's a way you can play without playing and not get fined. I can play like Metal Art Lemon and let you know I'm letting you throw the ball in the hoop and let everybody know, but I'm playing. I'll fall on the floor 25 times. I'm playing, but I'll be making a statement. If you got 80%, <laughs> listen to me, if you got 80% Negroes on all the, on all the teams and they said we're not playing, they ain't not, I don't think they're going to say we're going to find them. They said we better appease, we, we better do something. Because you, you, do you realize what kind of ripple effect that would bring through this country? Exactly. They that would shut down everything. They could have did a lot. That was the, you, there's they an old expressions. Strike, was, how does it go? Strike while the, the iron, iron is hot. I, strike while, strike the, iron while is, the iron is, is hot. hot. Something like that. That's is it. that it right? That's yes. it. That is it. Strike while the iron is hot. Meaning seize the opportunity. Right. Seize Don't the wait. Time. Do right. not wait. Hit it now. Go down. Go, we ain't playing. Why not? This, that, and other. And they could have took that demon to court or whatever and get money to go into everything. black communities, they did schools, it all. whatever. They did There's it a lot all. of things they could have They said did. the only way we're going to play, because you got to think about all of the advertising agencies and all that stuff that's connected with them, all right. the commercialism, all of that stuff. They said we're not playing nothing until we have these things addressed. Exactly. Man, it would have been addressed three minutes. All exactly. Everything would have been straight. But the problem is there's no unity amongst That's the That's what the point That's is. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yashua. Um, I want to say a couple things. First of all, they got a union. And when they want to strike because they ain't getting their wages, mm -hmm. they don't want to call for that. And there's nothing. The NBA shuts down. Mm -hmm. All right? And um, I, I beg to differ. They did make a statement. They showed you what was more important to them. Because they were saying it's the playoffs. Those owners would have lost their damn mind if they would have lost the revenue from the playoffs. They would have been doing everything under the sun to try to appease them. So they had the, the, the opportunity of that, leverage right. and power at that moment. Exactly. At and the, they did nothing with it. Man, that's gotta, the, that's, the, the, wait, that's wait, black wait, people for you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A powerless people. I don't think, wait a minute, the, the, the magnitude of what he just said has not, has not marinated on them heads out there. The butter didn't get to them biscuits? It didn't get to them biscuits. <laughs> what he just said was that this was the playoffs. The playoffs, everybody's on the edge of their seat. Everybody's waiting. And they all could have walked in unison. Man, that would have been something. Walked out. Like I said, the Earth, America would have cracked in half. Yep. Would have cracked in half. That was the power move right then. The, they iron, was, do it. the iron was soft as butter. <laughs> Trust me, Esau thought that was going to happen. And when it didn't happen, they took a sigh of relief. Yeah. Because that's why that commissioner came out as quick exactly. as he did. Exactly. Because he, they, they expected that to happen. But there was still a side of it that said, eh, nah, they're not unified. They're they not. said, it's not going to happen because you read the bottom of Deuteronomy 28, 48. It ain't going to happen until they be destroyed. These niggas ain't going to do nothing. Yeah, they, That's exactly what happened. They were unified. They gave the hand to the Egyptians on that one for food and wine. That's, that's the scripture that comes to my mind when they did that. They said, oh, we want our food in our houses. Yes. They said, if we do this, then they're going to take that from us. Yep. So let's, let's buck up just a little bit. Let's wear the, the warm-up, not even the game jersey. Let's wear the warm-up jersey inside out. So it was, it was all political. They, they had their representatives and their agents say, okay, this is what you got in front of you. This is what you could do. You got to do something to make a statement or you might lose your fans. So do this, and, and the Negroes will be satisfied with that. They'll think that that's something. Exactly. Also, Elder, mm -hmm. they took off their warm-up jerseys that said Clippers, but the blue jerseys also said Los Angeles. Mm which makes no sense. And on top of that, Blake Griffin, which is their star player, felt bad because the owner that called him out of his name has cancer. He felt bad for Oh, him. I'm glad you said cancer. <laughs> All of us are, oh, well, he got cancer. That's sympathy. Don't let sympathy rub off on you. So what? Him having cancer guy ain't got a damn thing to do with what he's, going, what he's saying. Okay, the white man got cancer. Oh, so what? He got cancer. Good. Drop dead and die. What the hell is this? We're supposed to fall out and cry. Esau always do that sympathy thing when they do some evil stuff. 
And I know some people don't feel right about that. They don't that. feel they, right. They, 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 the man got cancer, pray for him. I know some people feeling like that. That man got cancer. Now, how are y'all going to be up there saying uh, which death on the man? Huh? He's just a crazy white man. Uh, Isaac, Deuteronomy 28, 48, just the last verse. Last precept. Just the last precept. This is what white people know. The last, just the last precept. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Until he have destroyed thee. See, that's what white people know. These people are destroyed mentally and spiritually. They will never unify, never come together to accomplish nothing. White people know that. That's why the, the, the like the brothers were bringing up, they were, they seemed like they was nervous. What if they do? But it did. They put those. I for, see, I don't know these 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 leaders, the blacks that's in the front of the basketball game. Y'all might know some of them. The spokespeople, who was the ones that's been not Magic Johnson. There's some others I've seen on ES commentators and all that. There's a lot of a few of them I've seen, and they knew that let them come out, schmooze the whole thing over, and nothing will happen. Give me 2 Maccabees 4 and 10. Then let's go back into the history of sports. Many of you know this. Some of you ignore this. But we're going to re read it to reaffirm it to you. You like to run up and down a court, throw a ball in a hoop. Second me. Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 10, which when the king had granted. Wait, bear with me a second. I want everybody to get it. Abby, look up the word assimilation. Cultural assimilation, a process whereby a minority group gradually adapts to the customs and attitudes of the pre prevailing or dominant culture and customs. That is assimilation. That's what blacks and Latinos are. We are assimilationists. We are trying assimilation, sociology, the blending or fusing of minority into the dominant society, right? We are trying to become white people. We are trying to become Edomites here in society. And that's what we're about to read in 2 Maccabees. Nobody can hear you. Look at the, because I was looking at the one above it, cultural assimilation. That's the one I read. All right, first. but you read, okay. But see what it says, don't highlight it, that throws me off. Open it back up. The process whereby a minority group gradually adapts. It says, so it's not saying like integration. Remember we talked about that some, right, right. a while back. That's not integration. It's saying that one, one group adapts to another group. So what happens to, to the... Um, to the natural things of the former of the minority group, so to speak, it's gone. That's what you're getting ready to read, right. and that's what we're going to read in the Holy Bible. That's where everything we say we must prove it out of the Bible. Let's get that Second Maccabees, four the, and ten for you ball players. The Book of Second Maccabees, <laughs> chapter four. Some y'all gonna, gonna walk out of here mad as hell at me. You don't like basketball. Second Maccabees. They might leave early because the playoffs are gone. <laughs> Y'all remember that. Y'all know what I'm talking oh, about, I know don't what you're you? talking about. Second Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 10. Which when the king had granted, and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. So this is the beginning of assimilation. When, when he tried to bring the Israelites to the Greekish fashion. That's what we're reading in the Bible is what we're seeing alive today. Go ahead. And the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Eupolemus, who went ambassador to Rome for amity and aid, he took away and putting down the governments which were according to the Lord. That's what Rome was doing. Go ahead. He brought up new customs against the Lord. Watch what the new customs were. For he built gladly a place of exercise. This Israelite made a, a covenant, an agreement with the Greeks to build a place of exercise. Read. Wait, what is a place of exercise? A gymnasium. That's what we're looking at with NBA. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Elder. Go ahead. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. Why does it say the chief young men? Because in this gymnasium, this is what, this is what you want. The, ch the top, chief mean top, the top young men, not the old guys. Mm -hmm. They want them athletic brothers. That's what they was looking for. Go ahead. 
Now such was the height of Greek fashion. So your gymnasiums, your ball playing is all the height of Greek fashions. Right. Let me read that. It says, the history of the gymnasium dates back to ancient Greece, where the literal meaning of the Greek word gymnasium was school for naked exercise. That's what gymnasium means, school for naked exercise. So y'all were wondering why the people are half naked on the, on the, on the uh, basketball court mm -hmm. and in the different arenas. Now you found out why. It wasn't just because it's just part of culture, right. so to speak. It's because it has a direct link to the historical meaning of right. gymnasium. Didn't they just do some articles with your top athletes butt naked, Abiel? There's a whole series on them being naked. And everybody's like, ooh, they're trying to bring all that back. That's why now the top uh, clothing in this stuff is spandex. So you can see the shape, the form of the people. It all goes back to ex uh, exercise, a naked, what is it? Naked exercise. Historically, the gymnasium was used for exercise, communal bathing, and scholarly and philosophical pursuits. The hell is this? I wanted that word communal. What, what that word communal mean? No, I'm asking them. I know. It. Do y'all understand what the word communal mean? Like a community of naked people right. together. That's what it's saying. Right. Because above it, whose meaning is to train naked. That's what gym means. Gym, gym, gymnos or gymnazo. Exercise to train naked. So, um, let's go back to 2 Maccabees 4. What verse you at, Captain Isaac? Verse 13. Go ahead. Now such was the height of Greek fashions, an increase of heathenish manners, through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch, and no high priest. Because this Jason was an Israelite who was making the agreements with the Greeks. Go ahead. That the priests had no courage to serve any more at the altar. So the Levite priests didn't even want to serve no more at the altar, read. But despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise, after the game of discus called so, them forth. So discus was one of the first games the Greeks. Can we look at discus, Abiel? So this is the game of discus, Okay which is in your Olympics, and notice the pants he's wearing, spandex. Tight, uh, form-fitting gear. That's what they do. Watch, they're trying to get it to the naked thing, the literal naked thing. That's what they're trying to bring it to. Ab Abby, uh, find me the photos of the, of the, the photos of the, uh, in the magazine where they were naked. On, yeah, ESPN. All these athletes, butt naked. Y'all see this foolishness? But that's what gym, gymnasium means. Naked exercise. All of this. This is, all goes back to what we're reading in the Holy Bible. So if some of you think that the Bible is a fairy tale. No, you're sadly mistaken. You're a fairy tale. The Bible is reality. The Bible is the only true book. This is a mess. This is straight up madness. All right, that's enough. Isaac, where we at? Y'all understand what we're going to, right? Captain, where you at? Verse 15. 2 Maccabees 4, verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Notice what it says about our people, blacks and Latinos. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Read. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. What is that saying in layman's terms? But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Let's make that easy to be understood. Because a Negro will hear Grecians and go, Mm -hmm. What is that saying? Levi. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all, what is that saying? In other words, they want it to be just like the white man. Right. Liking the glory of the white man best of all. And that's your entire sports. Basketball, football, baseball, soccer. What else? R uh, relay race. I don't know. Decathlon, wrestling, eh, you thought you left you out of that thing, right? Boxing, all of that. Liking the glory of the white man best of all. We would do anything and give that thing up. Captain? Verse 16. By reason whereof saw calamity 
came upon them. Stop, stop. Read 15 to 16 again. I'm going to let them read down. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all, by reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. What's that saying? What is that saying? Stress and afflictions. Right. The stress afflictions upon us as a people. That's what happened. The Most High started to bring judgment on us as a people because of sports. We have not learned our lesson. We're still doing it. Some of you are trying to get your children into that stuff. And it's telling you, 16 again, Isaac. By reason whereof so calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. Right. The white man at one time was our enemies. And we wanted vengeance against them. Go ahead. Whose custom they followed so earnestly. Whose customs we followed so earnestly. Go ahead. And unto whom they desired to be like in all things. Assimilation. Assimilation. That's what it's talking about. Uh, Officer Abiel, get me the next article. Six reasons black athletes will never be activists like those of the 1960s. It says, I'm going to read it. There is no doubt our modern day black athletes are nothing, I gotta stress that, nothing like the activist athletes of the 1960s or 70s. This is the era of Muhammad Ali, Kurt Flood. Now, y'all know how Ma Muhammad Ali got down. That dude was an activist right there. If you don't know, you better check this on you all on YouTube. Uh, Kurt Flood, Spencer, some of these names I don't, I'm not familiar with. Spencer Haywood, I know that one. Smith and Carlos, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I know that one. Mike Warren, Lucius Allen, the Harvard University crew team. Jim, now, Jim Brown was bad. Jim Brown was a bad brother. Bill Russell and many more. This was the golden era of black activist athletes, but it seems like a relic of the distant past. The modern-day black athletes are not interested in the least bit of entertaining any political discussion involving the black community or otherwise. I give them food, I give them shelter, I give them this, so shut up. <laughs> I feel comfortable discussing why black athletes will never be activists like the golden era because as a former Division I full scholarship athlete, this is the writer, I know the environment they are, they are, breed, they are bred firsthand. Number one, no. It says no. I didn't make it pro, but have several friends that did and played today. I've been around them in this environment, and it is just more magnified and profitable than what I experienced on a collegiate level. I'm sure, I'm sure you will have some input and ideas to offer to this discussion as well. Please take a moment to identify them after reading below and sharing them with the group. Let's get into the reasons now. Lack, number one, lack of historical understanding and connection to the black struggle. That's number one. This is an infection most in the black community have. So it's not just the ball players, it's those of us out on the streets. We got, we're infected with the same disease. Lack of historical understanding and connection to the black struggle. This, and it'll be poor, poor people, still have a lack of historical understanding. This is an infection most in the black community have, so it isn't really fair to just try and pull it, put it, on, put it all on athletes. This is a clear byproduct of turning over the education of our young people to the system that put us in a situation. How could we ever expect them to properly educate our young people to grow up loving anyone but the system creator? I got to read that part again. How could we ever expect them, meaning our people, to properly educate? How could we ever expect them to properly educate our young people to grow up loving anyone but the system creator? What, what does that mean? The white man. <coughs> we are bred. We go to school to learn to love white people. We don't understand. Embrace or relate to our history as a whole. This is no different with the athletes. Therefore, when they grow up, they are disconnected and not willing to stick their neck out or sacrifice their promotion, financial gain for the black community. Poor people will fit right in this because the majority of our people fit this, what we're reading. Do y'all agree? What do poor people have that causes this infection to, to manifest so heavily? A television. 
That's how the, that's how we end up loving the that's how we end up loving the system that created it. Y'all follow me? Because in everybody's home, there's a flat screen TV. Y'all follow me? And they are not watching what they should be watching. They're watching all of this garbage. That's what's on their minds. And why do we turn to the television? Because it's, a, it's like a sleeping pill to us. It's entertainment. Some people cannot go a week without a television. You watch them. Let your TV break down and family members will kill you. Put another TV in this hat. <laughs> You understand? Because y'all don't know, I really want y'all to understand what I'm saying. It's like a drug. Because without TV, they're reminded of their state. They're reminded of their reality. And the television is just like dope. Just like drugs. Give me the television and I'm okay. I got my fix. Okay? This man knows that. You understand? The creator, this, the creator of the system, he knows that. That's why the, the advertisers pop, 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 pop. Exactly. Let's get the next one, Abiel. Raised in a political atmosphere, athletes are segregated from the general population of the black community. Well, I want you to listen good to this. Although they know what happens to our people and the struggle is real, at some point they are sheltered from it. This typically happens around high school years when they begin to separate themselves from the pack with their performance. They are put under the wing of the athletic department, and everything changes from there. Now, I used to work in Washington Heights as a high school. The, the sports players, the baseball players in, uh, in uh, George Washington High School, that was the name of the high school, they had carte blanche. They, they could do no wrong. Even if they was doing something wrong, they never, the sports but never got in trouble. So... I understand exactly what he said. They were separated from everybody else. Nobody can hang in the hall. No, the athletes, leave them alone. They can do what they want. It says, once they are recruited to college, given a scholarship and put on the program, they are further sheltered. All their affairs, interactions, and people of importance are with white handlers. Notice the words now, handlers. Ushering them through the athletic system. They have mostly white professors, white coaches, white trainers, white advisors, white athletic counselors, and many of them take white girlfriends. Do y'all see this? Upon moving into the professional ranks, the white handlers, see the words there, the handlers. <laughs> That's, those are slave words. Right. Exactly, right. like you're in a suit. Hand, who's, the hand, also, who's the handler of the baboon? Right. <laughs> Also, investors, because that's what you might as well call them all investors. They are investing in this Negro stock. Upon moving into the professional ranks, the white handlers continue in the form of agents, white agents, white lawyers, white accountants, white managers, white financial investors, and more. The race issues fall from the table because these are all a political atmosphere, meaning they don't deal with nothing political at all, where the only thing that matters is the money. Everyone is focused on the money, and no one diverts their attention from the bottom line. The next, the third reason why they're not like our forefather, it says, selfish. The struggle is over for them. Selfish might be a bit strong, but acting in their best interest isn't. None of the modern-day athletes are struggling financially. In the era of multi-million dollar contracts, television rights, endorsements, and merchandising, the financial struggle is over for athletes. The, they no longer live in the poverty-filled neighborhoods. They have money, access, and fame. The sun is always shining, and they have the money to chase their dreams. They are no longer interested in fighting the battles of the black community. In fact, many feel like they found a way out of the ghettos, and so should the rest of us. Notice it says, okay, the next thing it says, the league would likely fi find them. So this is what we were talking about earlier, about the league finding them financially. No matter which professional sport black athletes compete, it is likely the leagues would fine or silence them in some manner. These corporations have no interest in seeing their product, notice the words, their product take a stand for any political issues. It would more than likely upset a good portion of their fan base. Therefore, there's no room for this when it comes to their athletes. 
I'm not sure if remaining apolitical is written into the contracts these days as I didn't play professional ball, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit. So he's saying there might be something in the contract where they have to be apolitical. Stay the hell out of that stuff. I say that because you don't see any athletes, white, black, Asian, or other, take a stand for anything political in any sport. There was one, I remember. Remember there was a, a, a Jake who said he was Muslim and he was, his uh, religion did not allow him to say the national anthem. anthem. They thought, don't bring no religion up in here. Okay, um, back, okay, go up. Potential black ball from the league. So they might get black balls from the league. Even if you could find a black athlete grow a backbone to stand up and say something about the political environment surrounding the black community and enduring the potential fines from their governing league, they could be blackballed from playing in the future. So that's another fear they have. Each team has an owner. These owners are all about their money, period. If a black athlete is going to kick up some dust, bringing what they would perceive to be negative attention to their team, then he or she could be fired. Worse, all these owners know one another and are, what's that word? Friends. That's what we were saying earlier about Don Sterling's mad about his friends calling him. The athlete has the potential from being banned from all the teams in the league, and no one is willing to give up their livelihood to speak a few, uh, speak a few words on behalf of the black community. You know why? Why won't people stand up and speak on behalf of the black community today? Back in the 60s and the 70s, they did. Why not today? Um, I think the white man set the system so much that there's more at risk now than then. In the 60s, they're more, they, the black community, the, the, the leaders, the players have more to lose now than what they had in the 60s. Give him the mic next to you. Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, a lot of the reasons is um, no support. Like, why, like, a lot of them would stand up and put themselves out there for the so-called black community. But altogether, from athlete to your common person, they don't got, their mind is not right. So it would make no point or no sense. Like, why would I stand up for you and you... You over there, I'm right here. Like, I'm with him. Yeah, don't I like no that. Sense. Now, Some of y'all think touched on it, but that was good. That now, was good. I want to found a, this brother here. Who, Imar? No, the brother that spoke before him. He said something that got my attention. You. You made the point that there's more at risk now. Repeat what you just said. Give him the mic, quick. <clears throat> I, was, um, I said the white man set the system in Y'all listening? Way. The white man set the system this way because he put, he makes sure to put it that more is at risk now in this time than in the 60s. Now, the reason I wanted to go back to that, which is not to answer the question, but I wanted to comment on what he said because he's 100% right. The white man was able to put more things into effect because we allowed it. Because we, we are not united like we were more in during the 60s. Because... He, it, Believe me, he wanted to do what he's doing now because we allowed him to do it. He wanted to do it then, but we didn't let him. You follow me? We were more tightly together. You see, you know, even the women in the streets and all of that. Right. We, were, we were like, hell no, it ain't going down. Now so we went to sleep. That's the difference. Right, exactly. That's why nobody, it, it, there's no support like the brother said today. Black people will drop you like a hot potato, like a bad habit. They'll join with the white man quick, and you'll be the only one out there talking about helping uh, black people. And they'll be like, we don't need your help, nigga. That's what they do. You better watch it, standing up for these people. You gotta, they got to get their minds right. Okay, the next thing, we'll destroy sponsorship opportunities. Building on a financial impact, speaking out on a black political issues could cost the athlete their sponsorship opportunities. Talking about the black struggle in this country and world will upset many of the sponsoring advertising companies customer base. This means they will drop the athlete in a second and you know no one is going to compromise their money for the black community. Not even modern black people. So when you look, what was the name of the boxer? He, he was a big brother. He used to travel. He could sing also. James. Big dude. He had a white girlfriend. Jack Johnson. Forget the part that he had a white girlfriend. 
But he did stand up for Jake and a lot of things. You had a lot of black athletes back then who didn't give a damn. And the black community, us as a whole, supported them. There was no, I don't know him, I ain't read it. Was no, it was no disconnect between them and us. Shalom brothers and shalom sisters. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. As many of you are finding out, Christianity has destroyed our people. For the past 400 years, we have been indoctrinated in lies. Those lies of Christianity have not benefited our people in the least bit. Many of you know this. So, like Christ said in John chapter 3, verse 3, he said, Except ye be born again, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven which shall be established on earth, you must be born again. What does that mean? Many of you always quote that, but you don't understand what that means. When you go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34, Ezra said, Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding, meaning subdue all that you have learned here in Babylon the Great, it says, and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. What does that mean? Meaning you must be taught all over again, taught your nationality, taught why it is that we as a people went into slavery here in America. Who are we? What is the mystery of why this country, these nations have changed our nationality? We here at Israel United in Christ, we have classes seven days a week, three times a day, all for what? For your learning, for your edification. You will learn things never taught to you before. You will learn history, you will learn prophecy, and more importantly, you will learn the dynamics of what you need today to survive as a people. One third of Israel is prophesied to repent of their sins and come into this truth. So now we need you brothers and sisters, come join us here at IsraelUnite.org. Go to our online classes and register. This is for you. This is for the redemption of the 12 tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand that. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6 says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. And brothers and sisters, we are not keeping silence. So come join us. Help, help us build this truth. Donate to us so that we can keep this truth on and on. Push it forward. Help us get this gospel out. Because Christ said, when this gospel is taught throughout the earth, then shall the end come. So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom.